Welcome in 07 Citizens Black here from Castle Black Gaming and this is a review for Drake's Cutlass Red. Now if you like what I do and feel like I deserve it then please like, subscribe, and comment to tell me which ship review you would like me to tackle next or maybe we can just talk about why you love the red so much and I'll also be over on the new community hub if CIG gets the login issues worked out so be on the lookout for my content there as well. And so with all of that out of the way let's get to the review. Alright, so first here on the screen are the stats for the Cutlass Red. The stock weapon complement are four size 3 pilot controlled hardpoints, which stock comes with four gimbaled size 2 laser repeaters. There is also a size 4 Navi 7 echo scanner, which takes the place of a manned turret that you find on the Cutlass Black variant. There are no missiles on this ship. There is a sure grip tractor mount that currently does not do anything that's mounted on the rear. The vehicle dimensions are 37.5 meters in length, 26 and a half meters across its beam and width, and 11 and a half meters in height. It seats one to two passengers. The cargo is 12 SCU of storage, which is big enough to hold the mule and gray cat PTV and the new STV as well. It does have 12,000 K of internal inventory stowage and also 500 K of storage lockers and gun racks located behind the cockpit. The combat speed is 183 meters per second and the max overall speed is 1198 meters per second. The vehicle claim time from the ASOP terminal is 9 minutes and 27 seconds and you can of course pay credits to get it down to just over 3 minutes. Its other ship components are 1 size 2 shield, 2 size 2 coolers, 1 size 2 power plant, and one size 2 quantum drive. It has two size 2 hydrogen fuel tanks and one size 2 quantum fuel tank. So for many medium to large ships, this is a real concern for some of the ship owners and can determine if they in fact use a ship daily or decide to go with something different that they find more convenient to get in and out of and so I include the time it takes to enter a ship for those owners who want to weigh that into their decision. So for the Cutlass Red, it only takes about 22 to 25 seconds to enter the ship, which also includes closing the ramp behind you as you go to keep stowaways from entering without you knowing it. Now you can keep the door open between the med bay and cargo hold at the rear of the ship to shave off a couple of extra seconds, bringing it closer to 20 seconds on additional exits and entries, just not the very first one. The Cutlass is meant as more of a functional ambulance, so to speak, and not necessarily a ship to live in, at least by some of the other ships we see nowadays that seems to include more functional living quarters, such as the Hull A or even the Misk Freelancer series, which is the Cutlass series of ships' closest comparison. Now with this aside though, you will find two beds and a little bathroom where the man turret closet is on the Cutlass Black. There are also four gun racks and then a wide open space that feels like it could be a little more useful useful and better planned. Uh, moving on to the next compartment, which is the med bay, we have two medical beds that can treat up to tier 3 injuries, which in the Star Citizen universe tier 3 is the lowest least severe injury, with tier 1 being the most severe, so the bed on the Cutlass Red can effectively treat some minor leg or arm or head injuries such as migraines, sprains, or paper cuts, but more on this later. This is just a tour. Besides the medical beds, here you will also find another set of bunk beds in the corner next to one of the airlocks, in which this ship has two two airlocks on opposite sides from one another. From here we head out to the third compartment which is the cargo area with the ramp to enter and exit the ship and this pretty much concludes the interior tour. With the Cutlass Red, you are able to use any of the paints that can be bought from any of the Cutlass varieties, and they work on the Cutlass Red as well. Now looking at this current selection of paints when I'm making this video in October, you can see the 5-pack, which is normally on the website, and then also a ghoulish green option just for October. The 5-paint pack consists of the Coal Fire paint, which is a gray and red trimmed option and my personal favorite, at least for the Cutlass Black. You also have a Cypress paint scheme, which is more of a military camouflage look, and then the darker hot Hawthorne paint scheme. The Mistwalker paint has a snowy camo look and another one I think looks great. And then lastly we have the dark green Sauron paint scheme. I'm a fan of paint schemes, the more the better, but with the Cutlass Red I generally stick with the red theme as I like that look for a med ship and I've not personally changed the color but I did find a user on Reddit. So a shout out to Gray406 for sharing their picture of what a painted Cutlass Red looks like. So as you can see the red retains its rescue lettering even with the paint scheme over it so this should help those of you decide on if painting your Cutlass Red is worthwhile or not and this could be a great way to cover the fact that you're a rescue ship if that is your goal. 
The Cutlass Red Roll is that of a medium med ship that is meant to be more of an ambulance or a rescue transport than a ship that can actually fully heal or revive a player, which means that the Cutlass Red cannot act as a respawn point for players, which was one of the main features that made many people fly this ship before the 315 update that added medical tiers, hospitals, and new rules on how healing was handled overall. The healing system is far from perfect now, and so the Cutlass Red has kind of been pushed aside since this update to be more of a replenisher of fluids and foods than as an actual medical vessel. Now don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of people who use this ship and fly it religiously, but after losing its respawn ability, and with so many injuries seeming to be tier 2 or higher a lot of the time, it puts the Cutlass Red at a disadvantage when it comes to trying to actually do medical gameplay. The problem is that you will not see many people needing to call this ship for help because for what this ship can do, so can most of your on-hand med pins or the med gun. So for right now, the ship is basically just a good flying detox center when it comes to med gameplay. Now, other than med gameplay, the ship is still decent at getting around the verse using an XL1 quantum drive, so it makes for a decent daily driver, but you're giving up missiles in a manned turret, making bounties more difficult if you want to go that route as well for extra gameplay. It's decent enough though if you do not intend on doing ship combat as a daily runner, but again, it's more limited except for that refresh bed than say the Cutlass Black, which will net you more cargo space and more weapons for a broader range of things to do. Now, while technically the only features it is missing is the scanning capability to make that size 4 echo scanner useful, and of course the rear tractor attachment, it also feels like it's missing its main functionality, that being medical gameplay. Now, I'll share some ideas in the Black's wishlist section near the end of this video to make this ship more useful, but for now, let's just say that the only thing missing is that scanner and tractor function. The tractor function can be expected sometime in 2023 when ship tractor beams are implemented, which is currently on the roadmap to be completed in June of 2023. Hopefully this will include all ships that have tractor beams and not just a select few with many getting tossed off for a future pass as I could see some of the ships that might not be as cargo centric being forgotten about like the Cutlass Red. Now as for the scanning, the progress tracker has recently completed work on FPS radar scanning but that does not look like it will be the long range ship scanning that has long been promised for ships which is more than the current scanning we have now that's more immediate for the area you're in and not across a system as I believe this size 4 scanner is meant to do. And so with this being the scanning deliverables currently on the progress tractor, I think we can safely say that this feature will not be in the game anytime soon. The Cutlass Red comes stock with gimbaled laser repeaters, which for many will be good enough, so no need to upgrade there unless you want to go no gimbals for more damage, but at the cost of your repeaters needing front-facing targets only. There are no missiles as discussed early on, so no cost there. You will need to upgrade your shields, power plant, and quantum drive, to which I have a quick loadout video I released last week to help you get the best and the most convenient locations to find those. But overall, for those parts, you will spend roughly almost 200 thousand on parts, which isn't bad for a ship of this size. Now with the resource management feature coming up in the next year, I think we can safely assume a lot will be changing in regard to ship components, and I for one am hoping for more options, which I'm sure will be coming at a greater cost. I would definitely get that quantum drive sooner now rather than later, as it will be the most useful new component for you to shave off minutes from your travels. Alright, so as I go over in every video, the first part of this video has been mostly facts. Now we're going to come to the part where it's more subjective, and although I try not to really push my opinion too much on you, I will give my take coming from a reasonable place, trying to avoid hyping things just for the sake of hype. So how does the Cutlass Red look? Drake ships in general are either something you're all in for or not, and I happen to like the looks of the Cutlass ship variants, and with the red look and rescue lettering teamed up with the emergency lights, it's probably not only something I enjoy the looks of, but the red in particular is my favorite of the Cutlass variants, including the different paint schemes with the Cutlass Blue a close second. I don't think the look is stunning per my title, but I think it looks good and is befitting its role. Now, I'm just talking about the looks here, mainly the exterior, as the interior is just so bare bones it's nothing to really look at, and can be a little on the depressing side, but you gotta love that duct tape feel that Drake offers up, even if you cannot quite call it beauty.
Okay, so how does the Cutlass Red handle? Now, after flying so many ships over the past few months, I have to say that I came back to the Cutlass series not really remembering it being so loose to fly. It spins on a dime, and even though it's a bit slow at following after smaller targets when fighting, it was still responsive enough to not be terrible, and while I do not enjoy flying the Cutlass series as much for ship fighting, I did just enjoy flying it over planet surfaces or out and about in space. It's not terrible, and it's not the best, but it's in a perfect, nice spot, and I honestly did not feel the nosedive as much as I remember but I am flying with sticks now as opposed to the last time I truly flew a cutlass, so perhaps that's the difference. Regardless, I think those who are in the medium ship range who want this will not be let down by its flying capabilities and ease of landing. Just don't hit the ground too hard because those front forks are basically held together with cheap super glue and duct tape and come off pretty easily. But it didn't really affect my ability to land as much as some of the ships I've lost parts with, so there is that. <laughs> Alright, so this is a category that means different things to different people, and the best I can do is offer up my own opinion on why I think it either is or is not worth the real money price or grind in game. And I do try to keep in mind that a great many people truly watch what they spend, and so I like to find reasons to justify something's worth, especially in comparison to similarly priced ships that might be close to the same category. I also offer up tips on buying ships and how they can incrementally move up to larger, more ships, and good times to do this throughout the year. So with the Cutlass series of ships, they are priced at what I think is a pretty reasonable price, except for the Cutlass Steel and the Cutlass Blue. Both of which to me are just way more than the other two, and it's just, just not even close. I could see maybe 150 for those, but anyway, this is not a review of those ships, but you really have a glimpse at my thoughts on those here. Now the black is a good price, but I think even the red's $35 jump is just too much, especially considering that the medical gameplay has pretty much made this ship not as useful, at least for now. I will hold out hope that when medical gameplay tier 1 comes along that they reconsider their position on what this ship can treat or how often we at least get tier 3 injuries versus almost straight to tier 1 injuries but regardless I would rather see this ship priced at around 115 to 120 tops. I know my opinion means nothing to those in charge of pricing but that doesn't change my thoughts on this. Now 1.8 million credits in game is decent and while it is almost a 500k jump from the black it's not that much of a difference to put off buying one and I would suggest that anyone who wants this ship to go that route over buying one with real money. Now my wife does own the red but she bought it before it was robbed of its respawn feature and she does plan on upgrading to the RSI Apollo later when it comes out so for now she's keeping it and I can't say I blame her. Alright, so here we are at how I think this ship could be made to be more useful or more betterer. For one, I would like to see more fleshed out medical mission gameplay such as with NPCs or even medical supply missions. I would prefer the cargo space or maybe even just some of the room inside of the med bay have containers for bio waste or bio weapons or med supplies that need to be contained such as viruses or diseases or maybe even refrigerated containers to hold medical plants or medicines for transport. Having to go down to a planet or moon surface or cave to harvest rare medicinal herbs or plants or barks to take to a colony or station that is experiencing a breakout would be fun and could give the red and other med ships or specialized cargo vessels even with containment containers something more to do. Perhaps any cargo vessel can carry med supplies, but you get more time when you do them with the med vehicles because they have better containment capabilities. Um, having to go pick up NPCs with tier 3 injuries where you could stabilize them and thus increase how much time you have to get them to a hospital would be nice and give this ship something to do. And sure, you could allow anyone to pick up an injured NPC, but without those tier 3 beds, they would have to get them to the destination quicker. A balance pass and what handheld med devices can do versus a bed needs to kind of happen as well because as I pointed out earlier the red is almost useless in terms of what its main role is and that's not right. I'd like to see those bunk beds taken out of the med bay and maybe a little science station where you could grab those plants and herbs and take them there to craft your own med pens or other med supplies that are actually better than store-bought ones giving players a benefit from owning or trading these supplies. I know a lot of people would love to go out and do more exploring to find these kind of items to be made which would be an all-new gameplay loop as well. The ship does not have to have a respawn point to be made useful. There are plenty of things it could be doing using its size and agility to quickly go about the verse, doing all of the daily running that a med ship could do without just being a patient care ship. Anyway, that's my ideas on how to make the Cutlass Red and medical gameplay overall just more useful and fun. 
And that's going to do it for the ship review of the Cutlass Red. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the Drake ships and the Cutlass ships in particular, as these were what made me fall in love with Star Citizen. I'm also quite fond of healing in games, as this is usually the class I go to when playing in MMOs. And also, I'm in the healthcare industry as my day job, so I do tend to have more knowledge and thoughts on medical gameplay. Anyway, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, entertain your child's notions that a kiss can heal almost all wounds, and stay positive citizens.